Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Graduates, families, honored guests, and friends, on behalf of the faculty and staff of the school, it is my distinct honor to welcome you to this, the 2014 celebration of graduation from the George Washington University School of Business. I am Philip Wirtz, the Vice Dean of Programs in Education and the Marshal of this ceremony. To begin, may I please ask you to turn off all cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. To start the ceremony, I would like to introduce our student vocalist, May Inoue. May is graduating with a Master of Accountancy degree from the George Washington University School of Business. She has a Bachelor's of Arts in Economics and Philosophy from the University of Virginia, where she was a member and business manager of the Virginia Silhouettes a cappella group. Please stand for the singing of the national anthem. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallant. Streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, oh say, does that star spangled banner? Thank you very much. Please be seated. Today we honor the over 500 specialized master students who have met all the requirements of their respective degrees and therefore will stand before you at the end of this celebration as graduates of one of the most elite educational institutes, institutions in the country. I now have the pleasure of introducing to you the Interim Dean of the School of Business, D. Christopher Kays. Dean Kays is a professor of management at the School of Business and a senior fellow at the Center for Excellence in Public Leadership at the George Washington University. He has served as Interim Dean of the School of Business since 2013 and as Chair of the Department of Management. He is the author or co-author of five current and forthcoming books and numerous research studies. Dean Kay's research on learning, leadership, and the destructive pursuit of goals has received several awards, including the first most significant contribution to the Practice of Management Award by a division of the Academy of Management. His research on leadership, learning, and teamwork helps to understand how leaders build continuity in times of change and crisis. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Dean D. Christopher Kays. Good afternoon. And again, welcome to the George Washington University School of Business Specialized Master's Program. 
I want to take a few moments to acknowledge our special honorees today. Several weeks ago, a group of students were inducted into Beta Gamma Sigma, an honorary society for business programs. Those students are wearing blue and gold today. In addition, award presentations will be made to individual students and faculty this evening in a special ceremony. The awardees' names and their awards are listed in your programs, and Vice Dean Phil Wirtz will be calling all recipients later in the program. On Sunday, the university will be holding commencement on the National Mall and will feature speaker uh, remarks by award-winning chef Jose Andres, with President Knapp delivering the charge to our graduates. I now have the distinct honor to introduce today's keynote speaker, Hussein Fateh. Mr. Fateh is President, Chief Executive Officer, and a Director of DuPont Fabros Technology. He originally co-founded DuPont Fabros Development in 1997 with Lamont J. DuPont, where he managed through a variety of entities the acquisition, development, and leasing and management of company properties. DuPont Fabros Technology completed its initial public offering in the fall of 2007. Prior to his current responsibilities, Mr. Fateh served from 1990 to 1997 as vice president of a broad-based real estate development company where he was responsible for acquisition, development, leasing, financing, and sales. Mr. Fateh is a double alumnus of the George Washington University School of Business, earning both his bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's of science from the George Washington University. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mr. Hossein Fateh. Thank you, Dean Kays. And thank you to all the honored guests, parents, partners attending today's ceremonies. While you may not remember some of my advice today, remember this. It's never too late to have fun skateboarding. <laughs> to the graduating class of 2014, congratulations. I know what an important occasion this is for you. Well, it's important for me too. So important that like the rest of you, I asked my mom to come. Thank you for being here, Mama. When I first got the call from GW, I thought they've discovered how many classes I've missed and they were gonna take back my diploma. Luckily, it wasn't that. It was something quite special. The invitation to speak to you today. Frankly, I had no idea I was such a celebrity. After all, UC Irvine went with our local guy, President Obama. Stanford is tag teaming Bill and Melinda Gates. When Kanye West signed up Catholic and P. Diddy said yes to Howard, I knew I was in select company. <laughs> While there may be bigger celebrities and rap stars dishing out advice today, I think I do have something useful to share four pieces of contrarian advice. Piece of advice number one, take calculated risk when others are not. When I left GW in 1990, I began a life-changing apprenticeship. I walked into the office of a very independent-minded entrepreneur, nuts and bolts real estate genius. Now, I wasn't expecting a formal training program, but I also wasn't expecting this. He pointed to a chair at the end of his massive desk and said, sit down and shut up. And I did. For many years, I listened to his every word. You know, I had taken my first calculated risk, learning my trade at a nitty-gritty small operation instead of a more prestigious shop. With an interesting twist, this entrepreneur was in bankruptcy. What did this mean for me? 
It was a learning experience of a lifetime. Virtually, all his business employees were gone. It was just me. And rather than feel overwhelmed, I relished the opportunity. I learned every job in the place. I wasn't just his right hand. I was the right, the left, and a few others in between. It paid off. I listened and learned about transactions. I learned how to structure an offer, the importance of due diligence, how to negotiate with lenders, and how to lease. And most importantly, I learned how to navigate the subjective world of bankruptcy and to play the game, a chess game of bankruptcy law. Years passed, and I took my next calculated risk. Reconnecting with a like-minded childhood friend as my business partner, Lamont Dupont, together we formed a real estate company and purchased office buildings in DC. We specialized in renovations and made the initial foray into industrial, and then the then emerging data center space. In 2000, we prided ourselves on a major lease with a $30 billion communications company. It was the year's biggest lease. 12 months later, however, we found our pride had been misplaced. And as we watched our largest tenant declare bankruptcy in the great tech bubble of 2001. To say the least, our emerging portfolio was at risk. And speaking of portfolios, let me tell you what I think about portfolio theory. I don't believe in diversification. <laughs> you know, in my main line of business studies. With apologies to Professor Jabour and to Markowitz, diversification works for a portfolio of stocks, but not necessarily for your dreams and ambitions. Rather than, um, I'm a fan of what I call conviction theory. When you've done your research, when you've taken the calculated risk, when you know in your bones that it's right, go all in. I'll say more about conviction theory later. But for now, let me quote Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie summarized this approach best when he said, a wise man puts all his eggs in one basket and then watches it carefully. My partner and I had invested virtually every dime into our real estate basket. We were so all in that my wife and I were living in a small, heavily mortgaged house with our newborn daughter, Cami. In the middle of DC's characteristically hot summers, we were so cramped and so hot, my wife asked me if we could move into one of our data centers. At least it had decent air conditioning. <laughs> but back to the tech bubble and the bankrupt tenant. Turns out our tenant wasn't the only data center operator in trouble. Panic was setting in for many data center owners and lenders across the country. So what do you do when you've gone all in on a strategy that others are abandoning out of panic and fear, we, bought, we doubled down and brought more data centers. But you can't double down in exactly the same way. Something had to change. Something had to be different. And that's what brings me to my second piece of advice. Be creative in your approach to calculated risk. When I talk about creativity, it might help if I back up a bit and describe a data center. It's effectively the landlord of the internet. If not the internet per se, then certainly its products, its softwares, its databases, its apps, games, all sit 
within the data center. The data center provides three things, security, power, and cooling to all the servers. We knew that despite the dot-com meltdown, the internet wasn't going away. If the internet was a 12-chapter book, we were convinced that we were only on the first chapter. After all, this was 2001. We saw something different. We saw data centers as real estate, while telecom companies saw them as telecom assets. To realize our data center ambitions, we needed money. And because, like many of you, we didn't have much. The key was to get the banks to understand data centers as real estate. In those days, banks were in no mood to understand the operations of a data center. They had no desire to understand expenses associated with massive air conditioning units and the maintenance that goes into generators and UPS systems. That's where the creativity came in. We updated the 200-year-old model of a triple net lease and applied it to the data center for the first time. Our model made buildings much more valuable. It was a win for tenants, a win for owners, and a win for lenders. Banks got it, they lent us the money, and a lot of it. And a new business was born. So you see, creativity is not just for artists. It's also vital to the graduates of the specialized master's program. So what do you need besides willingness to take calculated risk and do it creatively? You need my third piece of advice. You need conviction. And here is when I tell you what I tell my children. Cami, Sophia, Kian, think for yourself. And once you've made up your mind, Stop listening to everybody else. There'll be a lot of naysayers out there. There'll be a plenty of people telling you it's never been done before. You've taken the risk. You've decided it's right. You've put the creativity in place. Once you have a plan, stop listening to everybody else. Be your own person. Stick to your conviction. Then give it time. And here's when that conviction comes in handy, on the second, on the third, and fourth time that failure rears its head. Because I hate to tell you, failure is rarely a one-off deal. What matters is how you come back from it. Five years after we thrived in the tech bubble, we pulled off a creative first. We obtained the IRS's first private letter ru ruling allowing data centers to qualify for real estate investment trust status. The market liked our savvy, recognized us with the largest REIT IPO of 2007. Then came the credit crunch of 2008. In a period of two months, our stock lost over 85% of its value. Friends and family members who had invested with us quit speaking to me. The driver of the downward pressure on the stock was a loan we had coming due on a data center in Chicago. Given the severity of the financial crisis, Neither the bank nor the market thought we could get a tenant and able to repay the loan. So we went to the bank and said, let's get creative and refinance. Do you want to take back an empty data center? Or would you rather get paid a higher interest rate for an extended term and substitute the collateral 
with a fully leased building in Virginia. By looking at the refi creatively, the lender came away with a stronger security, the market came away with renewed confidence in our ability to manage adverse events. We went on to become a leader in the data center space. For me, it was all about conviction. There was nothing wrong with the assets. There was nothing wrong with the internet, nor the future demand of data centers. It, there was a temporary disconnect with the credit markets. With conviction and creativity, I was convinced we could get past it. When it's right, you just know it. Case in point, when I met my wife, Dahlia, I knew immediately she was the one. After 40 days, I asked her to marry me. My business partner asked me, Hussein, are you sure? I told him, Lamont, I've never needed more than 45 days of due diligence for anything. <laughs> so in a collection of stories, I tried to illustrate my passion for calculated risk, creativity, conviction. But at the end of the day, there is no substitute for my fourth piece of advice. That is recognizing luck and grabbing it as it walks by. There's no story that exemplifies this as much as my 50-hour showdown in Blackstone's offices in New York City. In 2004, eight investors entered a conference room in midtown Manhattan, vying for the assets of bankrupt cable and wireless, USA. Carl Icahn was there, Oak Hill, Welsh Carson, the Gores brothers, Savis, and the founders of Arcadia. They were all there. I would have brought a ticket just to see that show. We went in armed with a solid due diligence on all the real estate and a guarantee from Lehman Brothers to finance our bid up to 148 million. We had conviction. And this is how it worked out. After two rounds of bidding, I ran out of money. I was out. Not just out of the running, but out of $1 million of my and my partner's money we had spent just getting to that point. I was sick. I had taken calculated risk, gone all in, and lost. Then I received perhaps the most important advice of my life. A kind lawyer, now don't laugh, kind lawyer is not necessarily an oxymoron, pulled me aside and said, Hussein, you've already been here 48 hours. We all already smell. Why don't we stick around and see what crumbs fall off the table? There still may be something here for you. What did I have to lose? I had spent months doing the due diligence. I had already lost a million. What was another night without sleep? So I continued to camp out on the conference room floor. The bidding was down to two investors, and they were both running out of money. One of them had a brainwave. Savis approached me and asked if we'd be willing to buy just the real estate and lease it back to them. Not the business, just the real estate. As a real estate guy, this was the deal that suited us perfectly. Talk about luck walking by. You better believe it. We grabbed it. We worked out the deal on a handwritten yellow piece of paper and went on to win the bid with Savas. Lehman kept their word and financed it for us. Savas bought the business for $148 million, and we bought the real estate for $53 million. And about a year later, we sold it for $94 million. 
This was truly a case of recognizing luck when it, all else had failed and grabbing it. Now, that's enough about me. Let's talk about you. I am so proud of you all. GW has done nothing but get more rigorous over time. Actually, I'm not sure if I could get in today. So what you've accomplished really impresses me. For those of you who've gotten A's, great job. Well done for your hard work. I still have nightmares about messing up my schedule and not doing my homework. For those of you who've not gotten A's, I have good news. It's not too late. It's irrelevant where you are today. What is relevant is where you are in 10 years. What matters is your willingness to take calculated risk, your ability to be creative in your work, the strength of your conviction, and perhaps most importantly, your good sense in grabbing luck. That work, that creativity, does not need to be disruptive. A lot of people think that good ideas need to be big, bold, and change the world all at once. Nice, but not necessarily so. I believe the value of incremental improvement is often understated. understated. Improvement compounds over time, just like money. I spent a few minutes a day thinking about a series of small improvements in the way data center leases are structured and built. For me, incremental improvement compounded a single building with a tenant in bankruptcy to a publicly traded company with 3.2 billion in assets. And as luck would have it, you are graduating at the best possible time at the, in the best possible place. I look at this moment in America, and I'm 100% convinced I wouldn't want to be anywhere else at any other time in history. You're going out into the world in a perfect trifecta for American business. Never have I seen such an alignment of infrastructure for success. Technology, energy, and capital. Let's talk about technology. Every year, the market is producing new businesses that drive efficiencies and, and improve the ways we live and work. Consider game changers like Uber and Airbnb, and payment systems like Square, and countless businesses that are derived from the trickle-down effect of these technologies. This is huge. Next, let's talk about cheap energy. New technologies are driving down the cost of energy to some of the lowest in the world. In the US, natural gas costs about $4.75 a BTU. In Singapore, it's closer to 20. And of course, from natural gas comes electricity. There will be cheap, abundant energy to fuel America, a superpower for the next 20 to 25 years. This is truly transformational. And finally, let's talk about capital. Because of cheap energy and efficiencies in technology, I don't see inflation spiking anytime soon. This will mean the availability of cheap money to fund good ideas for a very long time. 
The opportunities I see in the US are unparalleled. We have the prospects of growth of an emerging market with the benefits of a stable platform. So if you don't have a green card, try and get one and stay here. Milk these opportunities. Take calculated risks. Live your life all in. Be creative. Have conviction. I am excited for you. You're privileged to be here. Don't waste it. Get up and do it. Thank you and good luck, but don't forget to grab luck as it walks by. Thank you, Hussein, for sharing those thoughts and for particularly uh, your story with students. I'm, I'm sure in uh, years to come, we'll hear many sto similar stories from the graduates today. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the recipients of the 2014 School of Business Student Achievement Awards. As mentioned before, a ceremony will be held this evening to recognize faculty and students, and I'd like to acknowledge these students now by asking all award recipients to stand and remain standing while I read all of the awardees' names. This information can be found on pages 12 and 13 of your program booklet. Please hold your applause until all names have been announced. Shivan Agarwal, Maria Charlene Arigala, David William Batitu, William Wade Davis, Salami Erbas, Linda Wajiru Gathinga, Christopher Michael Goodnow, Mark Boutros Harb, Beata Jones, Jenny J. Kim, John K. Lancaster, Christine Leclerc, Karam Massal, Anna Paulina Matsiris, Kimberly Joan McGraw, Fan Mo, Munira Modi, Allison Norris, Oluwasan Ogunbamizi, Michael P. Ortiz, Gwen Wen Fan, Alexander D. Plaxon, Lucio Provenzani, Sam Rezai, Mark Silverberg, Jin Song, Ivana Stoyanovic, Yitian Yang, Min Cho, would you please, ladies and gentlemen, join me in a round of applause to congratulate the Student Award recipients. Good job. I now have the pleasure of introducing our student speaker, Ms. Maria Florencia Bocco. Ms. Boko is a Master of Science in Finance graduate for which she obtained a Fulbright scholarship. Prior to coming to the United States, she worked as an operations and portfolio manager in a brokerage firm and boutique investment bank in Cordoba, Cordoba Argentina. In this role, Ms. Boko was in charge of supervising and authorizing all market operations and coordinating front and back office teams. Additionally, she was in charge of portfolio management, institutional investors relations, and financial advisory. Ms. Boko earned a Bachelor of Science in Economics from the National University of Cordoba, Argentina. Additionally, she worked as a teaching assistant for macroeconomics in the global MBA program at GW. Ms. Boko is also enrolled in the Chartered Financial Advisor Program as a level one holder 
and a level two candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me in welcoming Ms. Maria Florencio Boco, our 2014 Specialized Master's Student. Thank you for the lovely introduction. I know you must be very tired from the party last night, so I will be very brief, I promise. Let me just start with a short story about me. I was very lucky to discover my passion at a very early age. When I was a child, when I was actually a five-year-old child, I had a quite funny picture in my mind of what capital markets were. In Spanish, we refer to the market as bolsa, which literally means bag. So every time I heard on the news that the market went up or down, in my head, the market was a bag of money, a bag of money going up and down. I clearly had no clue of what a stock was. But this whole idea of the bolsa was fascinating for me. And 17 years later, I was actually trading financial instruments in the Argentinian version of Wall Street, and I loved it. I started as a trader and financial advisor, and my interest in finance grew from that day. I had a wonderful experience in my country. I had a great job. I loved the people who I was working with, but I needed something else. I reached a point in which I asked myself, What's next? What happens now? So I decided that my next challenge would be to pursue a graduate program in finance in the United States. I believed, and most international students will agree with me, that American universities provide high quality education, particularly in business, and that would improve my chances to have a successful career. I chose GW for the quality of the school, the reputation of the Master of Science in Finance program, and the school's metropolitan location, like we all did. Here, we learned from great professors, who are not only great teachers, but also experts in their fields, with international backgrounds, with great experience, and with an incredible capacity of engaging our interest and desire to master the skills we require for our future. But in the classroom, we also learned from each other. Our diverse class made our experience as students the more enriching. We discovered that we were so different and yet so similar to one another that the cultural barriers began to diminish. It was in Dukas Hall where we learned how to work, collaborate, and achieve great results in a multicultural environment. And we did the most absurd things to study. For example, I remember we had to learn all the currencies in the world, and we started making up lines with my friends to remember them. One line was, I'm hungry because I spent all my money for rent. And that meant, in Hungary, the currency is the forint. Or let's have dinner in Jordan, because the currency there is the dinar. <laughs> now, we must apply the skills we gain in our grad school experience into our professional and personal lives. Because we live in a globalized world, and we came here to learn how to be global financial experts. We did that, but in the process, we became good global citizens. We should also remember, as we've heard many times, GWSB is at the intersection of business and society. And this means that as graduates of this school, we have the responsibility of not only being experts in our field, but also of meeting the highest professional, ethical, and moral standards. 
As professionals, all we have is our human capital, our knowledge, and our reputations. What will make us great leaders will be our capacity to act ethically while taking the initiative to change and innovate as the business landscape evolves. That is the kind of professional we all want to become. The financial industry faced a terrible downturn in 2008, severely damaging its reputation and how its practitioners were viewed by society. As a new generation of financial experts, we have the obligation to be a positive part of the change facing the industry. It will be our responsibility to demonstrate the value of financial institutions to the economic well-being of society. And to do that, we need to keep an open mind. We need to think globally and act with integrity as this industry advances towards providing a greater benefit to society. As fresh graduates, we all have this sense of accomplishment and we now begin a new chapter in our life. We need to take every day as a new opportunity to demonstrate how good we are. And if we do that, we shouldn't fear about the future. We will be fine. We will be great. And in the days we fail, we need to get up, learn, and keep going. We should all be proud of our accomplishment but also thankful to the support system that helped us go, th go through it all. Our families, spouses, friends, and faculty and staff of the GW School of Business. Thank you, and congratulations to the class of 2014. Thank you, Ms. Bogo. At this time, it is an honor to present the candidates. Will the candidates please rise and proceed to the ramp in front of the stage in accordance with the instructions from the GWSB commencement team. Master of Accountancy, Michelle Michaela Hayen. Fabrizio Rotati, Robert Haben, Taylor Coughlin, Tracy Clough, Gabby Wiscomi, Stephanie Allen Gold, Stephanie Ann Crivello, Jake Hagen, Colin Xavier White. Graham Douglas St Storm, Emily Blumenthal, 
Kyle M. Kingsbury. Kyle Wolf. Zhiyin Xi. Salami Airbosh. Paola Lior. Amy Marie Kleindest. Zhi Zhou. Xiao Qin Pei. Oluwai Shun Ogambami Se. Christy Marie Stevenson. Caitlin Shi Hunter. Olga Tarani Taranti. Jia Li Bai. Zhi Xuan Li. Ye Ji Ho. Evelyn Marie Oakley. Shelby Marie Kimber. Ni Jen. Wenping Du. Yun Zhang. Ya Xing Wang. Meng Shan Hu. Xin Xing. Mei Ainawi. Zimu Guo. Lu Yu. Shang Wang. Brian Banks. Scott Rothstein. Somendra Daudia. Fan Mo. Jia Wen Wang. Qian Liu. Jing Wen. Di Shang. Meng Zhi Wu. Jing Ma. Jing Ma. Yi Fan Yang. Rui Huang. Ivana Stoyanovich, Anna Xie, Ganja Istanbula, Istanbula Ola, Boba, Alison Luisa Norris, Sadim Fawzan of Fawzan. Salume Almadi. Mina Jia. Yue Dong. Yiran Zhou. Yunfei Wong, 
赠送。瑞雪孙，扎出言，孟怡乌。君于照，孟于蔡，亚亚文亚文乌，曾林江，天歌王，亚廷阳。潘阳、刘刘、袁高、艾宁、周左左、夏莫章。彭菊鲁，殷殷游，雪蒙正，军医王。惠江，鲁鲁增，西瑶林，文清流，一山河。冰结郭、林伟丁、萧寒、西城、宣科。英流，天剑臣，瑞寒照，泽雨辰，应新崔，英州。台州，若其孙，金文臣， Tarik Sowoff。荣丁，易成，子谦吴，汉于左，浩西胡，丁兆。Okay, Master of Business Analytics, okay. Isabel Rosa Lorenzo, Suda Regmi, Master of Finance, Sondos Al-Hadad. 
Sara Al Sali. Razan Al Bakr. Katija Bokupsa. Uh, Hatum Albasam. Shan Hong Go. Dong Cho Yu. Min Jo. Uh, Jinke Wu. Li Yin. Shou Ting Ju. Zin Yu Chen. Sinan Wu. Shou Jin Yung. Yan Ma. Jin Yu Sun. Uh, Ray Shi. Haiwa Bai. Long Yan. Kai Kai Luo. Shu Wai Huong. Bo Jiang. Shinin Do. Lin Yan Huang. Wen Wang. Yi Liu. Xiao Shan Shi. Alexander Dusenberry. Uh, Hao Do. Pretty Paralukar. Jidra Bo, Peter Gillum, Roderick Joseph Graham, Mark Botros Harp, Maria Ferencia Bocca, Miranda Kune. Jennifer Aluzar. Justin Adande. Omar Bader Gumrawi. Mohammed Shafiq. Lola Tobin. Elizabeth Rizzoni. Wan Hua, Hing Chong Zhou, Yadi Wang, Xiao Hai Lu, Bo Un, Wu Yu Liang. Ali Al Khalafi, <laughs> Lingji Chen, GD Lu, Wei Quan, Shi Ying Hu, Wen Wang. Yasi Joe yeah. Andrea Holmes Samuel Altman Matthew Glasgow Ch 
Charles Bacalli, Marvin Salvador, uh, Carlos Correa, Freddy Espino, Juan David Yorobe, Mohammed Adil Ismail, Bo Chang Hawang, Vinicius Meneze, Thank you. Uh, Amar Ben Ali Hamidian, Aljishi Kusai. Ahmed Feda, uh, Muhammad Alajaji, <laughs> Yazid Sultan Altahani, <laughs> Abdullah Alayadi, <laughs> Sagri Muhammad Al Sagri. Ganam Mohammed Al Sagri, <laughs> Abdurrahman Mohammed Aliya, <laughs> Abdulaziz Saud Al Tuhati, <laughs> Hamad Khalid Al Bluwi, <laughs> Abdul Karim Al Zawawi. Ahmed Maziat Hamoud Al Maziat, Bader Nasir Al Dakil, Ryan Bunjabi, Rawan Bunjabi, Reem Ahmed Bushnak. Gada Musale, Choyang Wu, Yung Peng Li, Yun Ri Jin, <coughs> Lubin Jiang. Jay Zeng, Yun Peng, Ki Jun Gin, Afra Al Shuabi, Dina Arkubi. Wizo, Dijing Tsing, Xing Li, Luxing Zhang, Nan Wong, Chou Fen Lin. Chu Jong, Wen Yu Ho, Chu Zuin Shou Dong, Shou Xuan Zhou, Zhong Bei Yun. Master of Science and in Information Systems Technology. That's enough, that's enough. Give me a shot. Okay, go, 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 go. Okay. Sharifa Yaqub Al Hashimi. Maha Al Qadi. 
संदेश शिव समकरण जूजो जोरी समुद्र जॉन लैंकेस्टर Ramina Trust <laughs> As a day Kazarai Daniel Shula Esam Al Tabet <laughs> Mohammed Al Muslim <laughs> Sung one oh Sita Liam Praiboon Jai Wen Zeng Zan Chen Wen Ren Dang Yasun Kaharum Muhammad Mashal <laughs> Pur Alta <laughs> Virgil J. Young <laughs> Zhuang Wen Fadel Fatani Harshavardhan Bambavle Katervia Tila Tia Taylor Fadi Al Mazaid Shariz Urib Sean Connolly Amadun Sizeh Abhishek Gohil Avneet Sabarwa Mansi, Mansi Gala Mansi Makwana Sandeep Pulaskar Jasleen Kaur Daryl Bushaya Nick Plusio Constantine Shepler Murat Demirbas Karima Annie Fulwashe Sally Fox Bergman Ziki Anu Mudu Noctran Ankita Singh, Luis Alvarado, Mark Silverberg, Benjamin Simmons, Adam Hillcock, Hickox, Elmir Husseino. Walter A. Wilk. Lynn Pendley. Amrita Nagaraj. Rabia Begum. 
Munira Modi. Cindy, Cindy Fun Wintran. <laughs> David Phillips. Nu Hai Huang. Master of Science in Project Management. Give me a second. Caitlin Jonna Woodson. Sandra Cisneros. Raquel Gonzalez Mota. Hassan Odrari. Joseph Knight. Keshan Kona. David Wayne Stoddard. Amy Nixon. Gabby Menasi. Kimberly Magra. Marta Wavro. Who are you? Nassim <laughs> Mogadam. <laughs> Hassan Khalife. <laughs> Fiona Lee Saunders. Adam Stoggart. Hello. Jade Ethan King. Anna Paulina Masrias, Elizabeth Ostrander, Catherine Michelle Miller, Talia Garfinkel, Gaten Butcher, Ehsan Hosseini. You. Riley Jenning Kennedy, John Tapia, Joe K. Sorry, I oh, know. Stephen Price Jacket. Sorry. What's that? Todd Michael Johnson. Kim Annabel Okaki. Mitra Zarandi. I didn't even look. David Ojuba. Hamid Reza Jadali. Who are you? Willen Ellis Smith. Rita Cooper. Oh, Johnny Faragian. Samantha Ann Dunmeyer. That's what I'm talking about, baby! Yeah! Joshua Gold. Michael Perez Otris. Or Lucio Provenziani, William Wade Davis, what? Yeah, yeah. Chan Wan Dam, mm. Luis Franzen, Jeffrey Denning. Casey Guinan, Sean Passamer, Rain 
Master of Tourism Administration. Lin Ding. Du Yang Zhang. Hi, how are you? Coletta Coleman. Heidi Munkasi. Carrie Christian Forbringer. Sharon Masica. Marisa Francis Rootman. Hi. Yu Yi Lu. Yi Jun Liu. Yi Tao Zhuang. Shi Ling Liang. Hu Yu Hu Yi Zhang. Ying Shen Fu. How are you? Thank you. Yuebo Li. Good luck. How are you? Shu Si Yang. Nezrin Nasser El Sarani. Alia Ala Hadari. Chiru Guo. Ding Gong, congratulations. Hi. Hai Shi Wang. Duo Heng Yang. Zhao Shung Huo. Eric Ashton. Maria Charlene Ariaga. Heather Richard. Crystal Latrice Morgan. David William Cater. Yolan John. Marcus Rafali Lee. Clara Saki. Danielle Nicole Thomas. Andrea Rene Lane. Hi, congratulations. Quincy Payne. Alexander David Plaxon. Hi. You ready for this? Avita Broughton. Donnie Chen. Hi. Tao Sho. Jennifer Kathleen Burns. Hi. Congratulations. Samantha Hoganson. Jason Kreisel. Hi, congratulations. Jose Melenis. Jacqueline Yvette Sanders. Nicole J. Libert. Hi. Lori Ann Dalton. Megan Phyllis. Hennessy. Congratulations. Abby Warrington Dell. Kayla Ile Carto. Jacqueline Alexis White. Allison Hammer. Fernanda Rivera. Ramjot Singh Uberoy. Richard Gazzarelli. Congratulations. Wang Shu Zhang. Hi. 
Juan Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Christopher Kays will now address the 2014 graduating class. Dean Kays. The School of Business at the George Washington University has provided you with a solid foundation for core business skills. We've encouraged you to connect with your community, through experiential learning, through internship experiences, and through study abroad programs, you've taken advantage of many of the opportunities that a university located in the nation's capital has to offer. And these experiences have taught you how business is interwoven with society. On this day of celebration, remember to thank the individuals who supported your quest for excellence, mentors, faculty, staff, family, friends, parents, significant others, who have supported you financially, emotionally, personally, and academically. The university namesake, George Washington, his name evokes courage, ideals, and leadership. His vision of building an institution of higher learning in the nation's capital is now a reality. And at the George Washington University School of Business, we carry on his vision for educating students who demonstrates the values of our business school, integrity, leadership, scholarship, service, and community relationships. You personify these ideals, and we are proud that you carry on the great tradition embodied by our community and George Washington. George Washington's life remains, reminds us to be bold in our vision, but humble in our achievements to take chances when opportunities arise, but to calculate risks accordingly. No achievement has ever been reached without doubt. Through, no achievement has ever been reached through doubt, but doubt has never been absent from great achievement. No life is perfect, and certainly George Washington's life was far from perfection, but imperfection should never be an excuse for inaction. To paraphrase George Washington himself, deeds, not words, are the foundation of success. The name George Washington is now inseparable from you. It will remain an important part of your day-to-day -day life for years to come. George Washington's name will appear on your resume, it'll come up in conversations, and hopefully will remain in your hearts. As you go about achieving great th things, remember the call for courage, ideals, and leadership that you learned while a student at George Washington University School of Business. As you continue to grow in your potential as a leader, I encourage you to stay connected with the university. Recent alumni are active in mentoring, hiring, supporting existing students, and the network grows stronger every day of George Washington University business alum. As a graduate of the School of Business, you graduated from a business school ranked among the top business schools around the world you carry the knowledge that you will allow you to successfully learn new things and prepare you to accomplish that which you could never have imagined. Completing a degree marks a significant milestone, but it is only the first step in a lifelong journey of discovery, growth, insight, and personal success. Today, you begin the next step of that learning journey. Congratulations on behalf of the deans, the faculty, the staff on an astounding accomplishment. Thank you, Dean Kays. We're almost at the end of our celebration, but I do not want it to end quietly. As I read the names of the degrees, I would like its students to rise up, to rise up loud, to rise up proud, and to make some noise that the White House can hear. <laughs> this is your day and your celebration, Master of Accountancy. 
Master of Science in Business Analytics. Oh, stay, stay up. Uh, Master of Science in Information Systems Technology. Master of Science in Project Management. Master of Tourism Administration. Please remain standing. Now, what I would like to do as the School of Business, I would like all of you and all of our guests, family and friends, to make as much noise as possible to let all of Foggy Bottom and all of the world know we are here. Guests, friends, parents, please join in on my cue. One, two, three. <laughs> Congratulations to the class of 2014! All right, thank you all. Would you please remain standing as our ceremony will conclude with the singing of the alma mater. Following the alma mater, please remain standing until the academic recessional is concluded. Please turn to the last page in your program for the alma mater. Would you all please remain standing?